Greetings. This is Justin Allen with the Elite Nurse Practitioner. Welcome to the Elite Nurse Practitioner Show, a podcast dedicated to nurse practitioner entrepreneurism and achieving financial freedom, where I talk directly with nurse practitioners who need help. Listen up. Our market is saturated. Jobs can be scarce. We are underpaid. We are undervalued. We are taken advantage of by the sharks within the healthcare system. And frankly, screw that. Sick of it. And it's time for a change. And listen, I'm here to help make that happen. We are powerful. We can forge a path where we are in control of our career and ultimately our financial and personal well-being. You do not need to submit to healthcare administrators and your doctor overlords. You do not have to take the measly salary. You do not have to work 50 to 60 hours a week. There is a different way and I'm here to show you that path. This podcast is raw and unfiltered. I have not talked to nurse practitioners in this podcast prior to the call outside of an email exchange to schedule the episode. What you're about to listen to is a consultation session between a nurse practitioner and myself. It is real, it is unscripted, it is unplanned, and I have no idea what we're going to talk about. Anything and everything can happen during our conversation. The nurse practitioners in these episodes are struggling with an issue in their professional or financial life, and they have reached out to me for help. My goal is to help a nurse practitioner with actionable advice that will enhance and improve their professional, business, and financial life. My other goal is to hopefully help my nurse practitioner sisters and brothers build a more productive, powerful, and free life. So I hope the content and information within these podcast episodes does just that. All right, on to the episode. Hello, everyone. Today, we'll be talking to Rob, who is a family nurse practitioner. Currently, he is working at an urgent care full time and is running out as he is getting burned out. He started to practice about a year and a half ago where he focuses on men's health and weight loss. He states the practice is doing well, but he is wanting more patients so he can finally break away from corporate medicine. Hey, Rob, how are you? Hey, how are you doing? I'm doing well. I'm, I'm doing good, man. Thanks for hopping on here. So tell us about yourself. How long have you been a nurse practitioner for and what sort of, this, uh, you know, what sorts of things you've been doing? Yeah, it's a kind of the standard route. I think a lot of us do. I was a nurse for seven years in the ER and then went back to school. Uh, I've been an NP. This is going in my 11th year. Um, Wanted to stay in the ER. So, so focused on that and a little bit of urgent care early on and then uh, dabbled uh, for about a year or two in primary care, but really didn't love it. So went back into urgent care and that's what I'm doing now. Cool. Awesome. Sounds like uh, my story just about, yeah, you know, working in the <laughs> ER as a RN and uh, working as an MP in the ER and urgent care. Yeah. I mean, sounds like we. Come yeah, I think it's a common that. story, especially in male NPs. A lot of us yeah. have gone that route. So, yeah, 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 yeah. That's an interesting, uh, that's an interesting point. I, that's what I see often. It seems like more men NPs go into the ER and urgent care settings. Uh but uh, but there's more females, so obviously probably there's more females in general in the ER urgent care. But, uh, but yeah, right. that seems to be kind of common amongst men and bees. Yeah, um, we love that uh, adrenaline fix, you know. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, but as you get older, I kind of just don't give a shit anymore. <laughs> yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. I don't, uh, I, don't I don't miss the days of getting swung out and spit on and all that stuff. So. Uh, no, no, God, no. Um, yeah, I don't. I never want to go back to that. Um, yeah. Anyways, though. Okay. So, uh, so you work in urgent care right now, full time, and you started a practice about a year and a half ago, uh, where you're doing some men's health and some weight loss. So, tell us a little bit about that. Yeah. So i um, I started out with a local on the side. Pick, got picked up with a local men's health clinic. And I just didn't really jive with how they were running things. Uh, it seemed really expensive. Um, I had been a patient of theirs actually prior to that. Uh, so I thought, you know, I could probably do this on my own and then came across a, a friend of mine introduced me to your courses and I went through the men's health course and thought, man, let me just do it. So, uh, started off with nothing very small, uh, had man, probably 15 patients for about the first six months or something was just really doing this completely on the side on my own. Um, and then after about a year, I hired someone to just help me manage all the administrative stuff and added a few more state licenses and then doubled and tripled the number of people in that next six months. Um, and, uh, and now I'm just kind of at a place where this is going well enough where it supports itself. Um, I, I, I like doing it and I would love to get away from 
the hospital system, corporate medicine, and just do this. But I don't, I'm not in that sweet spot where I've got enough volume of patients to, to make the switch. So I reached out to you to see if you could maybe help me uh, yeah. add, add more volume there. So Sure, sure. Okay, so let's first start with um, with income then, I guess. Uh, well, one, one question. So you took the men's health course. Do you feel like it helped you really just kind of get your head set and, you know, t- to do it? hundred percent. Yeah. yeah. It, it's kind of, you know, soup to nuts, every detail from beginning to end, everything you need, uh, yeah. and the, all, all the courses. And I don't, you know, and I don't need to pat your back this much, but, uh, I think all the courses are fantastic. I've bought yeah. three or four of them and they've all been incredibly helpful okay, uh, good. with with each, with each topic. So, okay. Okay. And good. I love yeah. that you added the CE option in there too. That was great. Yeah. 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 That was a little pain in the ass to do, but I'm glad. I we bet. It. Yeah. I bet. Um, okay, cool, man. Well, I just want to make sure that, uh, you know, you got some value out of it and, you know, we I, I, yeah. kind of just like to develop a straight to the point kind of course, you know, if you want to learn yeah. and really, really get into the physiology and stuff, then, you know, go read the book about it. But we want to tell you just, right. kind of just how to do it. Right. This is how you do it. Let's get started, you know? Um, okay, cool. Yeah. So let's, just uh, as an aside, I still go back and reference that, you know, probably once a week, I'm like you oh. know, scrolling through my notes, like, uh, what, what did he say about these peptides again? You know, that kind of thing. So <laughs> <clears throat> yeah. But. Okay, cool. Um, all right. Well, anyways, uh, let's start with income. So uh, where are you at personally here? Like, I guess what's what's preventing you from diving into this practice on a full-time basis? And I'm assuming it's probably coming down to money. Yeah, it's money. If I, you know, if I was independently wealthy, I'd just pursue this. I love I love practicing medicine. I, I've said this, you know, many times in the past couple of weeks. If I sitting in front of a patient is my calling, as soon as I leave that room and I have to deal with managers and whatever, all the admin and charting and BS, then I'm, you know, that's what I hate. Um, so I'd hundred percent do this if I could pay the bills and mortgage and all that stuff and the student loans from becoming an MP. Um uh, so yeah, money. It's just just about the money and 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 my vision, and I don't know if it's correct, that currently is about volume of patients so the the more volume i have the more money i'll get and then you know i can solely depend on this once i hit a that sweet spot of volume okay so with that said uh how much money are you bringing into this uh into the clinic right now the the men's health weight loss clinic makes about 5 to 6k a month okay um in revenue and so and not how much, how much of that's profit? Very little with the volume I have, probably just a few hundred dollars um after after expenses. So okay. So you're at that like you're at that break even. Like what oh, you're yeah. Yeah. yeah, okay. So the practice is paying for itself. You're not having to put a it lot is. of money into this. Okay. Perfect. Correct. Right. So you're at that point now where it's like, okay, every new patient, every dollar that comes in is basically into my pocket at this point. Correct. Yeah. And, yeah. uh, and instead of taking it, I've now, now I'm trying to pump it into marketing, which to be very honest, I didn't do any marketing at all until about a month and a half ago. I was only, only doing word of mouth, uh, referrals. So, okay. So, so yeah. Okay. And, and, and how many patients do you have? Uh, again, it's about, I have 125 on the books, but only about 50 to 60 right now are active patients. Okay. Okay. Gotcha. So I do that's, that's pretty good for word of mouth. I mean, pat yourself on the yeah. back. Like that's pretty yeah. good. Okay. Um, okay. So how much do you need to make to cover your personal expenses so you can get out of the urgent care? And mind you, this is not like 401k contributions, right. investing, you know, stuff like that. You know, that stuff will come a little bit later, but like, how much do you need to just get out? Yeah, if I could make 10k a month, I, I could get out. Okay, 10k easily. in yeah. your pocket. Yeah. Pre-tax, post-tax. Um, pre-tax, pre-tax. You're looking at like post post-tax probably eight eight and a half. Okay. So. Okay. Okay. So about eight thousand bucks is what you would need. When, yeah, when it's all it, said and done. it'd be a it'd be a tight kind of tighten the bootstraps kind of lifestyle, but that would be fine. 
I like, can do you, that. You could do it for 36 months, yeah, right? I absolutely. Mean, absolutely. Right, 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 right. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I mean, it's not the end of the world. It's not a permanent no. thing. No, yeah. no, no, it'd be, I'd be fine. I'd be yeah. just fine. So you know, yeah. a lot of people think it's permanent, you know, Oh God, it's only for a few months, you know? Um, right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay, cool. Anyway. So, uh, okay. So do $8,000, you know, between eight and 10 K it's totally achievable. So how much do you charge on a monthly basis for your services? You know, an average. Right. So it varies depending on the product. Um, testosterone, I, I run it at about 175 a month, and that includes labs. It'll include like your enclomifin or an astrozole if you get it. Um, and then it's a con concierge type service, obviously. Uh, for weight loss, I, I do suggest the pricing. So I start semaglutide at uh, 180 at 0.25 milligrams and go up by 25 bucks every time there's a quarter milligram dose increase. Um, and then the office visits themselves are 65 bucks. Okay. So each patient on a monthly basis, you would say 150, 200 bucks a month is about what you're averaging. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, you know, you do the math here, right? I mean, You'd only need 75 patients basically at 150 bucks a month to get that $10,000. Right. It's not that yeah. much. No. Really? <laughs> you know, it's, it's, no, it's not. <laughs> yeah. You know, when you break it down, it's not that many patients, right? Like if you had 100 new patients, you're looking at 15,000 extra dollars a month in your pocket, right? I hear it, man. I know. Yeah. So it's, it's just getting, getting there. Cause they, I mean, especially the weight loss ones, they drop off after, yeah. a few months, especially and the more successful you are with them, the faster they drop off, you know? So yeah, it's like, it's like filling a hole, you know, digging a hole in the sand they just keep yeah. filling back in. So yeah. but I hear you. Yeah. I don't need that many. Just, just no, got to get them. Yeah. So, you know, that's a good point, right? So the weight loss, weight loss is great money, but it is a very hard business to, have mm -hmm. as a long-term thing because patients come and go they lose their weight exactly leave, right exactly yeah yeah so what can you do to keep them as a long-term patient you know that's why you should be doing comprehensive lab work selling them on hormones peptides etc to try to keep them on board for other stuff right Right. Um, okay. Yeah. So make that an absolute priority i mean i've mentioned this multiple times in other podcasts it is so much cheaper to keep a patient and sell them on other services than to get a new patient. Right. Like, yeah. The acquisition cost of getting a new patient can be a lot of money and it takes a lot of time, but you have an established patient who already trusts you, who already knows you do what you can to keep them on board. Dude, even if it's 50 bucks a month or something. Okay. Right. Something cheap, you know, some vitamin injections, whatever it is, try to keep them. Okay. Okay. Like once they leave, they're gone. It might be difficult to get them back in the door, right? Right, exactly. Yeah. So make that a priority, okay? That's why that's why you should have some other services as well: hormone replacement therapy, vitamin injections, peptides, right. right. anti aging products, direct primary care, whatever it is that you got to do. Yeah. Okay? Yep. Yeah. So when you have a weight loss patient, be doing comprehensive hormone evaluation on every single one for the initial blood work. That's why I recommend, you know, in our lab panels that we have through Access Medical Labs and mm -hmm. um, in the courses, you know, for like a weight loss evaluation, you need to be checking thyroid, testosterone, estrogen, progesterone, et cetera. Right. right? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Growth hormone, you know, so check those things. And then that way you can hopefully get yourself a long-term patient. So that's one way to keep the patients that you have in the door. Okay. And okay. then patient acquisition, right? So that's going to be where you're getting a lot more new patients. You need to be focusing more on, um, you know, weight loss is fine. As long as you can figure out a way to keep them, you know, on board for a lot longer, um, not this three to six month kind of stuff. Uh, and that's where, you know, hormone replacement therapy and you know, that you do men's health, like once they're a patient, they're pretty much a patient for life. Yeah. Yeah. Those guys are great. I love them. They're just, yeah. they just are maintenance forever. Maintenance so, forever. And it's so yeah. easy, you know, yeah, very easy. It's so easy. You're talking to these people every six months for 15 minutes. <laughs> Basically, yeah. you know, yeah, some, like, some of them, I have to chase them down to get them to talk to me. I'm like, I, I kind of do need to talk to you sometimes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, I hear so, you, man. I'm like, yeah. 
you, I mean, you have to see them every six months because it's it's a controlled substance, right? Right, right. You can't give right. a refill unless you see them every six months. Right, but like some right. of these guys, you know, they'll get their refill and they'll time it right. So, you know, you don't talk to them in eight or nine months instead because they're just – they're right, right, right. They're dodging you. They're not getting their follow up lab work. And it's just like, okay, but once you're out, you're not getting a refill, you know? Yeah. 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 And they've got then, that mentality like, well, I mean, you fixed me. I don't need to talk to you ever again. Yeah. No, <laughs> exactly. It doesn't work quite like that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, but then you talk to them at nine month mark, you do their blood work. It's completely normal. Everything looks fantastic. Okay. Cool. See you in six months. Like, yep, you know, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And the yep. phone call lasts five minutes, you know? Um, yeah, that that is the ideal. I mean, that to me is such the 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 profit margin is so high compared to weight loss, which is just a battle constantly. Yeah, so hundred percent, man. Hormone replacement therapy is such a profitable service um, when you factor in the time investment. You know, right? Exactly. Yeah. 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 Um, so yeah, so that should be your priority, right? Is the right. hormone replacement therapy? Like that's where you should really, really focus. Do you want to see men only, or do you want to do female HRT too? Yeah, I'll, I'll be very honest. Uh, I would see anyone for hormone replacement. I don't feel as comfortable with the women, but that's more of just kind of a knowledge base issue and a little insecurity on my part. But I have I have a couple female hormone uh, replacement patients, and yeah. um, and and I would see beyond. I mean, you know, however you want to interpret that. I'm in Seattle or in the Seattle area, so there's lots of other people that want hormones. That I'd be happy to see. Um, sure. I have no, no problem. Uh, okay. <laughs> so yeah. I, would just, I would not discriminate if there's money going to the bank, you know? Sure. So, so your website then should say that, you know, men's health, women's HRT, yeah. transgender HRT, yeah, whatever, exactly. you know? Yeah. yeah. So, um, so yeah, learn the ins and outs of it, you know, and, and I, and I don't, I don't want to get, uh, you know, I don't want to have any negative comments directed towards me on this, but with like female HRT, you know, I treat quite a few females at my men's health practices, like, uh, you know, the wives of patients basically, right? or yep. like the friends of a patient or something like that. And I predominantly just treat them with a little bit of some testosterone. Like yeah. I usually don't have to give them anything else, estrogen, progesterone, especially like the postmenopausal women. It's like, it's the testosterone nice. okay. that they feel better on, you know, okay. and they don't complain about of anything else, just a very low dose testosterone. Not that much, five milligrams a day of some topical testosterone. It gets their level, their total testosterone up to, you know, 75 to 100 free testosterone of, you know, three or four or something like that. And they feel fantastic. No issues whatsoever. Like it's, it, it's a piece of cake. That sounds easy. Yeah. 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 Now, if you really want to do it and get Bob, obviously you need to do the progesterone, the estrogen, that kind of thing too, right? Um, if you want to get comprehensive about it. But I've just found that just a little bit of some testosterone cream for a majority of my female patients seems to be all it really all, all they really need. So okay. yeah. Uh, but I would definitely seek some advanced training. You know, our new updated women's right. health. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Our women's health course we just updated. Uh, we included a lot more protocols and stuff in our advanced course. You could take that, or you could do something with World Link Medical or whatever. Um, but uh, but yeah, yeah. Run, run into the the women are tougher, I think, because um, they they're either totally successful with uh, with hormone therapy or nothing seems to help them. And so those that other side, they really frustrate me because I play around with all the different peptides and hormones and, you know, even the um, GLP-1 inhibitors, and they just don't seem to get any improvement and they get really frustrated, you know, and I get frustrated. And so, but um, I haven't, I haven't in any of them really focused just on the testosterone uh, aspect of it. It's been really the mix, the topical mix. I use Hallandale with, you know, from your recommendation and they've got a a mix of the estrogen, progesterone, testosterone yeah. cream that we I tip I use typically. Uh, maybe their testosterone levels aren't getting high enough. You know. Yeah, yeah. Um, That's a good there, good idea. It could be some other issues too. Ferritin, iron levels, um, B twelve levels. There could be a variety of different things. Okay. Yeah. So, you know, get real good comprehensive blood work on that. Uh, Jenny Gallagher, who did the Advanced Women's Health course for me. Um, she talks a lot about doing a lot of these other accessory tests like iron, uh, you know, different B vitamins, et cetera, um, really dialing in that stuff. Because listen, dude, you can treat a woman, you can get her testosterone level up, you could optimize her hormones and all of this. But if her ferritin is 35, 
it doesn't matter what right. you do. She's going to be fatigued. She's not going to do yeah. well. You know what I mean? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So a real comprehensive panel for your female patients will do, uh, will do a lot for them. Okay. Good. That's good advice. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but, uh, but anyways, though, so, uh, for more of a business aspect though, uh, really focus in on that. I think if you have sections on your website that go over this and, you know, once word of mouth kind of starts to, then, um, you know, it'll snowball, especially if patients are feeling better. So, um, you know, you live in a pretty populous area with a lot of suburbs and stuff around it. Mm-hmm. So there's exactly. yeah. gotta be some, uh, I guess some, some service deserts out there, you know, that if you could fill in the, the need or the gap, you should be successful. I would imagine. Yeah. Yeah. I think the, um, you had a podcast you, you put up recently of a guy that's down in Oregon. I think he's covering Southern Washington, but there's not uh, very many men's health clinics. There's one guy that runs a couple of them in my area. And then there's, um, I think a telehealth one that kind of focuses on Seattle, but, uh, it, you know, there's uh, gosh, a few million people in this corridor of Western Washington and, you know, five clinics basically that, that focus on men's health anyway. There's yeah ton, tons of options for weight loss, but, um, at least, you know, online and locally, but. So millions of people here and all right. you need, all you need is a hundred. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but that's, you know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> when you look at it that way, man, it's it's not yeah. that hard, right? Like there's well, right, right. In your area, all you need's a hundred. <laughs> like that's not that hard to do, right? So how yeah, do you man. do it? <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> how do you get what's it? the friggin' problem? Yeah. So. All right. I hope everyone's enjoying the episode so far. I just wanted to take a quick break to thank everyone listening and also give a big thank you to all of my social media followers and email subscribers. If you haven't done so yet, please subscribe to our email list at www.leadnp.com and make sure to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. Email subscribers will receive updates on new weekly podcast episodes, multiple weekly articles we publish, new courses, and everything else related to helping you succeed. Remember, all elite nurse practitioner courses are designed to help you build a niche practice, increase your financial strength, and to break free from the rat race. If I can break free and the other countless nurse practitioners can break free, then so can you. Additionally, please share this podcast with your other nurse practitioner sisters and brothers out there. The more NPs that venture out on their own, the stronger our profession will become. Now, let's get back to the episode. Do you have a physical address or is this just telemedicine only? I'm only doing telemedicine. I want I want a physical address re- so badly. I just don't. I, I mean, I guess it makes me really uncomfortable. I don't have like, a ton of capital to throw at that. The prices here are outrageous. Uh, very locally, you know, a, a few hundred square foot office is three grand a month. And it's just too much. Um, I could commute 45, 60 minutes and get some pretty reasonably priced stuff but that's a you know that's well the question here though rob is um, so getting a brick and mortar has been tough but that i really think that you know if i build it they will come but that's that's also i don't know if that's kind of the myth in my mind um i probably sh- can do this telehealth just as well but, but to answer your question yeah just telehealth right now okay so the question here rob is If you drive 45 minutes somewhere and open up an office that's in a cheaper area, so you don't have to pay $3,000 a month for an office, instead you pay $1,200, right? Right. The 45-minute drive is worth it because what if some of those locations are a service desert? You know what I mean? Right. Right. Yeah, like, exactly. And they are there. They really are. There's nothing. They, there. they are. So then this, so. this would be my advice for you. If you really want to scale and grow this thing as fast as possible is, you know, telemedicine only. Okay, that's fine. It's great. It works, but it could be hard to get patients um, unless you're going to spend money marketing. Okay. Right. And spend a lot of money marketing because it's hard for people to find you, you know, mm-hmm. Um, I'm sure you're probably, no, you're probably realizing that, like, yeah. how, do they, how, yeah. how do people even find your website? How do they even know you exist? Right. 
And that's where having listings really makes it so much easier. You know, I'm assuming you don't have a Google business listing because you don't have an address. I do. I use my home address as the as oh, the business listing, and, and I hope that no one comes knocking on my door. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, I, I do. Okay, so if people look up Men's Health in your area, are, are you popping up? Uh, that's a good question. Let me see. I haven't. I haven't even searched. Ooh, man, you need to be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyone listening to this, if you have a Google business listing, you better be like getting on Google and making sure your shit comes up. No, I don't. Nope, I don't see myself on here. Do you have men's health or weight loss in 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 the name? Let's see. Uh, no, I I didn't because I was you know trying to outsmart all the the same name clinics out there. You know, no, no, and, because you got to remember, people are looking they're they're looking the stuff up. Yeah, you know, yeah. and they're gonna call the places that come up. And if you're not coming up, man, you're just you're a fart in the wind. They don't even know you. You know, like right. you're just you're not there. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So my advice for you, if you want to stay telemedicine, you need to work on that Google business listing and okay. um, you need to change the name. If you really want men's health, if you want to focus more on men's health, then you might want to put men's health in the name or put testosterone clinic in the name. Testosterone right. clinic doesn't necessarily exclude women though, right? right? I mean, we get women that call our men's health clinic all the time and they say, do you do testosterone replacement therapy for, for women? Because testosterone is in the name of my practice. And right. Sure. Yeah, we'll see you. Why not? You know? Um, so, so keep that in mind. Think to yourself, what are people looking up? Because they're going to put that keyword in Google. And if it's in your name, you're going to come up. Okay. Yeah, okay. it makes sense. It all yeah. makes sense. And especially if your website has lots of information on it, blogs, videos, lots of content, those keywords are in it. Okay. Okay. You okay. can also do some Google keyword uh, ads as well. I really like Google search ads. Um, they work really well. And so you could put a little bit of money into those and see if it, you know, see if it converts. So when you go into Google ads, you know, it'll allow you to create ads and the ad will pop up based off of someone's keyword that they use. They type in testosterone clinic, men's health clinic near me, hormone replacement therapy, doctor, or hormone replacement therapy clinic, whatever it is. And if you align your ads with those keywords, when someone searches for that keyword, your ad will pop up. Yeah. At yeah. the very top of the search, right? Right. Yeah. Yeah. So you could experiment a little bit with that too. That'll help with a with a uh, with a telemedicine practice. Like I think it's honestly for a telemedicine practice, it's really not even negotiable. You need to have a at least a Google search ad. Right. Okay. Yeah. There's okay. You, you have to you have to get the name of your practice in front of in front of people's eyes. Right. You right. know. Exactly. Yeah, and that's and that's an easy way to do it. Okay. Um. If you had a physical location, though, tied to a Google business listing that people could actually go to, and if it was in a decent area where you could actually have a sign on the road or whatever, you're going to get more patients. It's pretty much a guarantee. Well, there you go. (laughs) Yeah. You know, I think you really need to consider it. Yeah. I definitely consider it. I want want a brick and mortar badly. I I don't want to just do telehealth. No, I don't think... I mean, telehealth practices can be very, very successful and very, very profitable. But I think that having a hybrid kind of practice really is the most optimal, optimal. Model. Right. Right. Yeah. 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 So, makes sense. So I think that uh, homework for you, really, man, is to get on get on Google Maps, type in testosterone clinic, men's health clinic, et cetera, and really try to find an area that um, has a decent demographic you know, middle, middle, upper class, higher class, um, Mm -hmm. and where there really aren't services, um, and just find those areas and start really looking around those areas, take a drive on a Sunday afternoon or whatever, go drive around those areas and see if you can find some commercial space, drive around and see what you can find. You might be surprised. Okay. Yeah. I can do that. Yeah. So that'd be my advice for you, man. If you really want to grow this and try to get some more volume. Um, Yeah. And think about, 
from a telemedicine practice standpoint, uh, you got to spend money marketing, right? So if you're spending $3,000 a month marketing your telemedicine practice, what if you had a physical location for $1,500 a month that had roadside frontage? Mm -hmm. If you think about that as your marketing part of your marketing budget, it makes sense. Right. Yep. Yeah. So, so you might got to dump some more money into this until, you know, the increased volume, I guess, offsets the increased expense. Yeah. That's what I figured would have to happen, but, yeah. uh, but I'm down to do it. I want, I want this to grow. So. Yeah. Yeah. I think you're, I, th I think you're in a good spot, man. If it's not overly saturated then, and like you said, there's millions of people there. There's gotta be, there's gotta be demand for it. Yeah, I would think so. Um, I, I don't, I don't know why there wouldn't be, but it's, it's ton, millions of people and plenty of, you know, family aged men, middle-aged men, thirties and forties. So, uh, the, the volume or population that are testosterone deficient is probably very high. So guarantee it. Yeah. 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 Um, so I guess any other questions in terms of like, you know, marketing, or getting more patients in the door anything else you want to talk about with that or any any other concerns what uh what about social media do you do you do much with social media or recommend much on facebook or instagram anything like that um like i always tell people man it is so hit or miss yeah. um the thing about social media marketing is that it's typically cold marketing mm -hmm. like you send out this ad to a specific demographic of people in hopes that they're interested in what you're putting in front of their face. Right. Yeah. Right. Like, yep. so you basically send the signal out. It's like cold calling, right? It's like being a right. telemarketer and calling people on the phone and hoping someone bites. It's <laughs> there's no exactly. different. You're you're sending out that ad and you're hoping someone bites, right? You hope you get right. in front of the, in the eyes of someone who already is somewhat interested in it. Mm -hmm. So that's why I think that you should focus more on the hot lead marketing first. People who are okay. genuinely in, who are searching for it already. That's where that Google search ad comes in. That's where having, you know, an optimized Google listing with lots of reviews comes in. You know, like you're a guy looking for men's health or someone looking for weight loss and they find your Google business listing, it pops up and it has a hundred five star reviews. They're, they're probably going to click on, on your business and go to your website. Right. You know, right. And so that's where social media marketing kind of falls off for me. I, I just think there's better ways to be spending your money. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Now it does work. Don't, don't get me wrong. It does work and it can work. It just, sometimes it just really doesn't. And so, and you could be spending a lot of money. Yes. Yeah. It really draws you in with the, <laughs> Just a little bit a day, you know, but then that adds up. So it adds up. Yeah. It really absolutely. Does. It really yeah. does. Now, I know some people who do advertise their men's health practice or their weight loss clinic on Facebook and they do really well, but they're in an area that uh is not highly populated. So mm. if you're advertising your, you know, you say you're advertising a weight loss clinic in a city of 20,000 people. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you're spending $500 a month on that. Chances are that all 20,000 people in this small area are probably going to see your ad over a period of a month. Right. Yeah. In that situation, it, 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 it can work. But in your situation, you're advertising this to a region of millions of people. And yeah. so it can just really water down. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. It makes a lot of sense. Uh, yeah. <laughs> that explains a lot of the problems I've been having with just not getting a lot of leads from social media advertising. Yeah. Yeah. I'd say just cut it, man. I would say no, yeah. don't waste your money on it. I think you could probably spend your money doing some some other things. Right. Yeah. No, that, that the Google, the Google suggestions makes perfect sense. Yeah. Now so. Now, with social media marketing, if you can target very, very specific people, then it tends to increase your chances of success. Right. So, you know, if you could target police officers, firefighters, you know, people who yep. utilize cell services, then it actually can work well, but you just got to be very specific. Right. 
Yeah. And I, I would love to do that. I mean, when I first started, it was with a, a fire station. So like, you know, I just got word of mouth, one guy to the next guy, we're all firefighters. And so yep. I kind of have developed this little special place in my heart for firefighters and police and veterans. 100%. Yep. Yeah. hundred percent agree with you, man. Um, yeah, we treat, I think we probably treat almost the entire fire department in, in, <laughs> in my County. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah. you know, a lot of police officers, you know, once you get a few of those right. guys in there, yeah, word spreads quick. Um, have you thought about like veterans, for example, um, it's easy to target veterans, uh, online. So like, you know, you could t- do specific targeted ads towards them and, and say, you know, we appreciate your service, whatever, 20% off, you know, things like that. It works. Yeah. yeah. I haven't done any targeted veteran stuff, but that's uh, okay. definitely something I'm going to look into tonight. I'm also a veteran, so I think I can, you know, even put Dude, that in the ad. That You can speak veteran. to them. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So. Yeah, you can speak to them. Utilize that. Like that's a yeah. strength, man. You know? For sure. Yeah, utilize that. Like, yeah, I wouldn't scrap social media marketing quite yet. If you can be real specific, I think then it would be worth your while. So if you can really speak to the veterans, your website, veteran owned, mm-hmm. you know, discounts for mm-hmm. veterans, first responders, like if you really can change your ad copy and your message to that and really focus in more on that. I think that um, you could increase your volume significantly. Okay. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. It's just trying it, man. You know, you just don't know until you actually give it a shot. (laughs) Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Any other questions about that, about marketing? No, no. I think that covers a lot for me to look into. Um, and uh, things that, you know, I, I definitely had been falling short on, so or hadn't really paid attention to. So I think I've got some work to do here. Yeah. Okay. What about your website? Uh, did you build it yourself? Uh, no, I had a family member help me build it initially and then um, brought in, uh, like I mentioned, about a month ago, I actually broke down and hired uh, someone to kind of help me hone all my marketing stuff and she went through the website and tightened it up and made it look okay. clean cleaner and all that kind of stuff so can you get in there and edit it yourself though in terms of just some of the content the wording and stuff uh, i was we went back and forth with the content uh so as as it was written i was you know vetoing and, and adding into it so okay um, i didn't didn't write it all myself for sure she okay she did most of it while with my input okay well if 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 you're going to change some of the messaging on there if you want to be more veteran specific or whatever mm. if you want to change some of that uh instead of spending money on this web designer going in there and doing it you need to make sure you mm. have the login information so you get in on the back end and you can get into that web builder and change the right. stuff change some of it yourself it'll save you a lot of money yeah, yeah, that's that's on my to do list actually is to get all that login info because I don't want to keep paying someone to do this because it's not cheap. Uh, no, man. Yeah, dude, you pay um, for it, dude. Get that, get that information. Yeah, I will. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, anything else you want to talk about, or anything else you need? No, to sir. Uh, no, that's. I think it covers exactly what I need. Just building up that volume. Plus, you've got me some good clinical pearls to to add into the practice. So yeah, uh, I'm thinking of one person specifically I'm going to go to tonight and talk to her about this and see if we can maybe tweak her, get her feeling better. Cool. So, awesome. Yeah. Man. Awesome. Um, well, I'd like to end the episode uh, with you asking me a question, uh, personal question, curiosity, you know, something like that. Do you have a, uh, a question for me? Uh, oh man, put me on the spot there. <laughs> uh, what, I guess what's been maybe your biggest regret when you left the the corporate side of things to to be on your own? Has there been has there been any regrets or anything you wish you had done differently in terms of leading the job? Yeah, um, yeah. Uh, I mean, obviously, I don't regret leaving one bit. I wish I would have did it earlier. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I think you'll find that as well when you when you end up leaving. You'll be like, geez, why was I torturing myself <laughs> for so long? Um, 
But I think probably one regret with it was maybe not having my benefits um, and my schedule uh, aligned and set up as, you know, as much as I should have. Um, You know, I didn't really have a plan for health insurance. I didn't really have much of a plan for like my 401k. Mm -hmm. Um, I didn't really think about it that much, you know. Um, so I wish I probably would have done a little bit more research on, on that. Cause I just ended up settling with just whatever health insurance plan I could get as quick as I possibly could, you know? Right. So, yeah. So I didn't really put a lot of thought into that when I probably should have, um, and my schedule too, you know, when you leave a job, uh, you leave that structure. And I remember, you know, mm-hmm. you, you know, we briefly talked before we started recording about having like a purpose, um, and and yeah, I felt like once I left, that schedule and that structure was gone. And so I found myself uh, trying to figure out what I needed to do with my time. Right. Yeah. yeah. So I think that another regret was not having more of a plan. I kind of just winged it. I mean, that's the story <laughs> of my life. Just pull on the trigger and, you know, ask questions later kind of a thing. Um, yeah. 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 So I think that was probably another another big regret of mine. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Uh, uh, that really resonates with me as well. So, yeah. 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 So be careful. You know, when you leave, make sure you really have a plan with what you're going to do with all that extra spare time. You know, make sure you have a plan on what you're going to do with that spare time in terms of your business growth, too. Um, I didn't have a whole lot of plan there. I mean, I had some plans in my mind. Okay, I'm going to spend my time doing this and that, you know, once I leave. And, uh, but it was just all in my head. I didn't really have anything written down. I didn't have like a real organized plan of what I was going to do with that extra time. So uh, my biggest piece of advice for you would be, you know, make sure you have something written down, goals and a plan and a process for, for that extra time. Because dude, when you leave that job, how many more hours a week are you going to have a lot? Oh God. Yeah. Yeah. A whole lot, right? Yeah, 30, 30 plus hours, 40 30 plus, plus hours. hours. And then you yeah, factor in yeah. commuting time, yeah, all that shit, yeah. right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 So, so yeah. So that's, yeah, that'd be my piece of advice for you with that. So, all right. I'm good. Cool. Awesome, man. Well, hey, listen, I appreciate, I uh, appreciate you hopping on here. And uh, if you ever want to do a follow up, you know, you just let me know. Absolutely. Yeah. I really enjoyed it. I appreciate it. We're really grateful for everything you do for the NP community. So, yeah, that's a pleasure, man. I'm just glad that, uh, you know, you took a couple courses that helped you and you were able to start a business and, you know, now you're on that kind of that next, you're at that next step. Right. So it just right. makes, make, makes me happy to see that, you know, you're a real person doing something, you know? So <laughs> good, good. yeah. Yeah. Cool. Awesome. I will right, well, listen. Right. I appreciate it. And just let me know if you ever want to do it again. Yeah. Thanks, Justin. Cool. Thanks. Bye. Bye. I hope everyone enjoyed the episode with Rob doing very well, you know, a year and a half uh, going in and just word of mouth only has like 75 active patients. The practice is paying for itself, that sort of a thing. So everything's going pretty well for him. His problem is volume though. Like how do you get more people in doors so you can, you know, increase your revenue? I think that's one of the biggest problems that most businesses have. Like, how do you increase the volume of the customer? And it just really just comes down to marketing. I mean, that's just what it is. That's why I always say marketing is the number one function of your business. You have to market. You have to get patients in the door. And so for him, you know, telemedicine only, it can be difficult marketing that business. Unless you have a lot of money to spend doing it. And sometimes you're not going to get a great return on it. So that's why you always need to prioritize hot leads versus cold leads, okay? Make sure people can find you easily. People are searching for these services, so make sure they can find you easily. And uh, with social media marketing, you've got to make sure that you have a specific demographic and it will improve your chances of success. But right, hope everyone enjoys this episode. Talk to you guys later. Thanks. Bye. Thank you for listening to the show. Quick legal disclaimer, the content of this podcast is meant for informational and entertainment purposes only and should not be used as legal, financial, medical, regulatory, or practice specific advice. For information pertaining to your specific legal, financial, medical, or practice specific needs, please be sure to consult with your lawyer, CPA, medical director, and or your state's practice laws and the most up-to-date clinical guidelines. As always, do your due diligence when it comes to any information found online and in podcasts. The content in this podcast is copyrighted by Galaxy Medical Southwest 2023 and cannot be duplicated, rebroadcasted, or reproduced with out our written permission.